New Orleans Saints star cornerback Marshawn Lattimore wasted no time establishing that he is back and committed for this New Orleans Saints defense. We got all that and a little bit of land yap for you on today's episode of Locked on Saints. You are Locked on Saints, your daily New Orleans Saints podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What is good, Houdat Nation and Houdat family? I'm your host, Ross Jackson, New Orleans native, your New Orleans Saints expert and credentialed member of the media covering those New Orleans Saints as a senior writer and reporter over at Saints News Network. And on today's episode of Locked on Saints, we're going to take a look at players that stood out and plays that made us go ooh and ah all throughout the first day of mandatory minicamps, including a big start for the New Orleans Saints defense, but a big time takeover for the New Orleans Saints offense. We're also going to take a look at Alvin Kamara's return. He's looking as smooth as ever, and he's going to fit right in with this new New Orleans Saints offensive system. And to kick us all off, we're taking a look at Marshawn Lattimore, who wasted no time putting on full display that he is indeed back and ready to go for the New Orleans Saints. We appreciate you as always. Make it locked on Saints, your first listen of the day every day. And for being an everyday or here on the show, which is a proud part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Marshawn Lattimore wasted no time, wasted no opportunity, and certainly never found the opportunity to sit back, sit on his hands, and not put out on full display that he is back and ready to go for this New Orleans Saints team. He spoke to media after practice as well, spoke very plainly, very clearly about his conversations with Dennis Allen over the course of the offseason, felt that he had nothing that he needed to clear up. Everything's good. They're moving forward, period. I love no belly aching. I love no, um, you know, fluff. I love just getting straight to the point and being straightforward that like, hey, I'm here, period. And not only did he say about it, talk about it, not only did he talk about it, he beat about it as well when he was on the field. Marshawn Lattimore took every single first team top corner rep all throughout practice. I watched Several players leave practice, or not necessarily leave practice, but need to tap out, go over to the sideline, get a little hydrated. It was hot today. It was a hot one here in New Orleans. It was a hot one out there in Metri. Uh, But Marshall Lattimore played every single one of those off, excuse me, of those defensive first team snaps, did the drills, went through everything, no belly aching, no grouching, just went to work. And that was one of the big things that I wanted to see from Marshall Lattimore. Did everything go great for him? No, we'll highlight some of the ups and downs of his practice here in just a second. But one of the things that I wanted to see, and one of the things that I mentioned in this morning's episode, was that it can't just be about, is he present? What's the participation looking like? And exactly as I expected, Marshawn Lattimore looks ready to remind everybody about who he beat. Um, Look, it wasn't all great for Marshawn Lattimore. Started off early in seven on sevens, being beat by Chris Olave down the left sideline for a big time touchdown connection between Chris Olave and Derek Carr Olave again uh, in a no-contact jersey. I don't know if that played a role in anything, but when we got back to team drills a little bit later, it certainly didn't look like it uh, for Marshawn. I'll get to that here in a second. But um, man, just this big, deep connection down the left sideline with Marshawn Lattimore trailing a defender over the top and things like that, you could just kind of see like, oh yeah, okay, it's his first practice since November. But then after that, Things kind of buckled down when it came to Marshall and Lattimore. Came back during team drills while the team was working on mostly situational drills, end of half drills, like end of half simulations and things like that, trying to get in the field goal range to get a field goal before quote unquote halftime, all that. Uh, He had a big PBU in tight coverage against Marshall, excuse me, against Chris Olave. Derek Carr dropped back as he was releasing the football, kind of stepped on either an offensive lineman's foot or maybe a defensive lineman's foot. Everybody was fine. Uh, But it did make it to where he just kind of had to launch the ball. So go ahead and put it up there for your top receiver to get an opportunity to go up. But Marshawn Lattimore was having none of it. Went up with uh, Chris Olave, stride for stride, you know, leap for leap, however it is that you want to look at it, knock the ball away. I highlight that it was his first practice since November. First practice since November means you got to knock a little bit of rust off, but it didn't seem to hold him back in terms of his conditioning. That was one of the big things that I was concerned about going into mandatory mini camps, especially right now, it feels like July here in New Orleans already, like New Orleans, July. I'm not going to say it feels like August yet. August is a different beast. Uh, but 
it was not cool outside, but Marshawn Lattimore made it through every single one of those reps that he was called for, whether it be individual drills, whether it be seven on sevens, team drills, whatever, he was out there getting it done. So kudos to him, did not waste any opportunity showing that he is back and ready to get started again with this team. Um, Alvin Kamara was also back as well, and he should feel right back at home in this New Orleans Saints offense, running to the outside. Yes, we saw it. Alvin Kamara in space. We got to see it. Passing game as well, especially right off the bat. One of the first completions in team drills was actually to Alvin Kamara uh, as they got started in a little check down over on the outside, but still getting him involved, getting him involved in passing game, all that. Looks smooth. I'm going to borrow my borrow a con- uh, comment here from Jameis Winston. Going to keep the legacy alive. Smooth is the other side of the pillow. Look really good. Moved really well. Um, ran through the drill- drills extremely well. Um, you know, look, Alvin Kamara knows what he's doing out on the field and certainly still looks at it. Now, looks like it. Now, there was a lot of uh, rotation for the running backs. We saw a lot of James Robinson. We saw a lot of Jordan Mims. We saw a lot of Kendra Miller. We saw a lot of um, uh, uh, Jamal Williams. We saw a lot of Kabodi. Like, we saw a lot of all these guys. And so I'm interested to see how his uh, participation ticks up over the course of these three days. Uh, and I understand the idea of trying to keep him fresh and everything like that, but it, it's three days. You, you got three days here to get everybody kind of on the same page, everybody operating. And then there's a bunch of time off before training camp. So looking forward to seeing him maybe get a little bit more involved. But I will say there are a lot of running backs in that running back room that are getting those first team reps and all that. Coming up next, I want to dive into the plays and the players that stood out leading off with how the offense continues to show that uh, it's kind of calling the shots right now. We got that coming up for you as we continue on with today's episode of Locked on Saints, part of Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode of Locked on Saints brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. Right now, you can make every moment more, especially right now, it is summertime. So for some of y'all, that means a little bit of golf, right? Getting out, getting back out to the course, but also means baseball, means NBA finals, means so much more, and you can bet on it all over at FanDuel. Right now, new customers are going to get $200 in bonus bets by winning any $5 bet to get started. That's it. $200 in bonus bets. If you win a $5 bet, you can then bet that on everything from finals MVP to who's going to hit one out of the park over in the MLB. So much more for you to check out. Uh, they also have right now as a potential for that first $5 bet. If you're looking to get started on FanDuel, the Mavericks playing up against uh, the Boston Celtics tomorrow in Dallas. Right now, Dallas down 0-2, but favored by two and a half points. The line has moved. So if you like that, or if you like the Celtics to keep everything going, I think the Celtics might end up sweeping this one. Sorry, Nick Angstead of Locked on Mavs, but it's 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 not looking great. Uh, you can head over there and then get started, get that 200 bucks if you win that first $5 bet. Just visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On and get a big win to start off your summer. FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Let's get it, Houdat Nation. The New Orleans Saints offense, I mean, we talk about not wasting time. The New Orleans Saints offense wasted no time letting them letting the New Orleans Saints defense right now know, hey, running this, running this at the moment. So it was a good day for the offense. We appreciate you very much, as always, for being here for another episode of Locked on Saints. This is going to be a, our, our short episode here, second episode of the day. But we'll have a fresh episode up for you tomorrow. We are your team every day. We don't just say it. We live it. On tomorrow's episode, I'm going to explain why we're going to talk about how good the offense was here. We're going to explain why the defense now needs to respond after another strong start by the New Orleans Saints offense. And it turns out that it wasn't just fans and analysts that were surprised about Colorado State tight end Dallin Holker falling out of the draft. Turns out the team was surprised as well. So we're going to tell you all about that and how the New Orleans Saints got Dallin Holker to New Orleans. Got some inside stuff for you in tomorrow's episode. So look, the offense continues to find ways to give the defense fits for right now. They continue to attack the middle of the field. You got some jump ball wins going on. Kyle Sheets with a nice catch over on the sideline in tight coverage. A.T. Perry, a couple of big catches over on either sideline in tight coverage, all that. It's been nice. One of the things that's been really, really good to see is not only are we seeing some receivers run wide open. There was one point during, I believe it was, let me make sure, but I'm fairly certain it was Jake Hayner. Yeah, Jake Hayner's... um, situational drill, which was an end of the first half drill. They started at 58 seconds on the 25 yard line and just tried to get in the field goal range. Uh, Jake Hayner led a field goal opportunity that was good from 40. Um, 
Spencer Rattler led a field goal try that was no good from 57. Uh, Derek Carr and the first team got three seconds left. They needed to move the ball a little bit more. Couldn't get it. False start ended that drive for them. So that part kind of stunk. But outside of that, New Orleans Saints offense looked really good. Attack in the middle of the field. So I mentioned not only were there moments where there were players running wide open, but there were also moments to where tight coverage, but the receiver simply won. You need both of those if you want to win in the NFL. Uh, we saw them also taking deep shots. We saw uh, two plays of the day in this one. Derek Carr in seven on sevens connecting with Chris Olave down the left sideline with Marshawn Lattimore in coverage. That was a big time one, uh, the one that we highlighted earlier. Then we saw another one during team drills, the first set of team drills, which was dealing with crowd noise. So we're actually playing crowd noise outside for that one. Uh, Jake Hayner connecting with Rashid Shahid uh, with Rajon Wright in coverage down the right sideline with a big time catch for what looked like it might have been a touchdown. Couldn't tell. We were at a weird angle. Uh, but if nothing else, it was like a 30 plus yard completion downfield. Really, really nice ball placement by Jake Hayner. Really, really good adjustment by Rashid Shahid. Really nice stuff. Um, we also saw a lot of use of motion, a lot of use of play action, rollout still there, all of it. Like this New Orleans Saints team is being very, very overt, very, very clear about uh, what its DNA is, what its identity will be in 2024. And that should be a relief to you, right? I mean, we talked about how much the New Orleans Saints last year, you and I talked all the time about how much the New Orleans Saints did not have an identity on offense. Heck, Alvin Kamara said it in a press conference. This New Orleans Saints offense has an identity, and its identity is multi, multi, multipli, multi, multiplicious. Is that just delicious multiplied? I love it. Multiplicious. Um, I'm all about it. Multiplicitous? I don't know. I'm going to say multiplicious. I love that a lot. Uh, but look, the defense still had a couple of good moments as well. Carl Granderson started off team drills with the sack on Derek Carr. Pete Werner looked really, really good today. Several times where he either drew what would have probably been called a holding penalty uh, in the run game or firing into the backfield for a tackle for a loss. I think it was one of Pete Werner's best practices so far from what we've seen through OTAs. And then now to get started here with mandatory uh, minicamp. Um, Derek Carr completed 11 of his 16 passes, including a touchdown. Hayner, Jake Hayner completed 11 of 14 passes, including a touchdown. Spencer Rattler keeps getting better. Seven of nine, no touchdowns, but seven of nine. And then at least led the Saints offense in that third team drill. 58 seconds left on the clock at the end of the half simulation to at least get a field goal attempt in, even though it was no good. I believe that field goal attempt was 57 yards. It might have been 47 yards. Uh, I might have written that down wrong, but I think it was 57. Uh, and then finally, Nathan Peterman, three of three as well in his attempts. He did not lead um, one of those end of half drives. Blake Groupie was six of seven everywhere from uh, extra point range to apparently 57 yards. The one that he missed would, the, would be that long. 57 one. Um, and then I got a couple of injury updates for you as well. So I would say my plays of the day were the touchdowns from Derek Carter, Chris Olave, as well as from Jake Hayner, the big deep pass down the field to, um, to Rashid Shahid. Uh, players on defense that absolutely stood out, Carl Granderson, Pete Werner, really nice days for both of those guys. I would say Marshawn Lattimore had his moments as well to where he looked like Marshawn Lattimore, no doubt. Um, but I mean, the best player on the field today looked like it was Chris Olave. Rashid Shahid, I think, was targeted like three or four times. No drops, caught everything. No, no, not only no drops, no completions outside of one throwaway opportunity there. But really, really good stuff. All right, let me give you some attendance updates here. Basically, like what you really need to know here is that everyone was present in some shape, form, or fashion. Um, the only we we the the only real kind of surprise absence was Brian Brzee. But of the players that we did not see, it includes guys that we still haven't seen yet, like Stanley Morgan Jr. Um, Nephi Sewell was around, but he wasn't uh, participating, obviously. Juwan Johnson was another surprise. Doesn't sound like it's anything serious. However, I asked around and people were like, no, 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 he'll, he'll be fine. So hopefully that ends up holding up. Uh, we saw um, Brian Brzee not there. And then we saw other players like Fayon Hicks. Um, Ryan Ramchick wasn't there. Uh, Tana Passanio, of course, wasn't there. Jack Heflin wasn't there. So uh, that's that's kind of it. I mean, not a lot of surprises in all that. I know Fayon Hicks is okay. Uh, I know Juwan Johnson's, uh, it sounds like that's all okay as well. So it doesn't seem like there's anything of concern. And the one thing to know is that of the players that are injured and cannot be on the field, like Ryan Ramchek, Chase Young, um, I guess I would throw guys like Brian Brzee and uh, others in that category as well. According to Dennis Allen, everyone was present at the facility. So good news there. 
Uh, no progress update on Ryan Ramchick just yet. Maybe we'll get one in a couple of weeks, but it doesn't sound like there's even a timeline when it comes to Ryan Ramchick. So I'm still not expecting to see much of Ryan Ramchick in 2024, at least at this time. Um, second round draft pick, Kool-Aid McKinstry was outside today. Uh, we saw him working with trainers off to the side. Has not participated in team drills or seven on sevens. We didn't expect that, but also didn't participate in uh, individual drills just yet either. That's also okay. Uh, but it was good to see him out there working um, off to the side. And then I mentioned that Chase Young was there. Not only was Chase Young there, but he also uh, spoke to media as well after. So uh, really good stuff there. So there you go. That's a, that's a quick overview of all the highlights from today. We'll have a fresh episode up for you tomorrow morning as well, digging into a couple of other pieces, including, of course, Dallin Holker and how the New Orleans Saints got him to New Orleans. And we're going to take a look at how the defense must respond in tomorrow's mini camp. So we appreciate you very much. As always, make it Locked on Saints your first listen of the day every day. Don't forget to go and check out Locked on Sports today, both 24-7 stream and the 20 to 25 minute show hosted by Peter Bukowski. Get you everything you need to know from around the world of sports, all the biggest stories. Go and check out Locked on Pelicans as well. And I cannot wait until I can finally tell you what's going on with Locked on LSU. Uh, but that will be on the way here soon. Appreciate you very much. As always, make it Locked on Saints. Oh, and by the way, after you're done watching this, hop over to the Second and Saints YouTube page. John Hendricks and I will be live talking more in depth about uh, minicamp as well. So don't miss that. Appreciate you. As always, make it Locked on Saints a part of your day, part of your routine for saying yes to me and the show. As always, if you see me, please say hi. And if you need anything else around your New Orleans Saints in between these episodes, make sure you follow me on your favorite social media at Ross Jackson, N-O-L-A. Hit me up. Let me know how the family's doing. Let me know how you're living. Let me know how you're mom and them. And trust you, that nation, I'll holla at you.